Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Welcome to another video on Dead Zone 3rd Edition. We've had a good look at what's inside this fantastic starter set. Now I'm going to show you how to build the miniatures. We'll give you some tips on putting them together anyway. Of course you can come up with your own force lists for your strike teams. Whatever you want, so do a little bit of research first. You might want to read the rules and get the hang of it first before you decide how to build your teams. I've cheated a little bit. I found an online website called techraptor.net. I'll put the link in the show notes where they gave you some suggested lists to get started with. Because I've got limited time, I'm going with those lists. They look like a good starting point. So that's how I'm going to build up my miniatures. There's heaps of choice in this set for attaching your own weapons and coming up with your own team. So have a think about that. But here's how I built mine. Now you'll see I went to all the trouble of filling the holes in the bases with green stuff and in the end I changed my mind. I dug this out and put the magnet on these sides and used the other flat side as the top. So we all make mistakes. Never mind, let's get into the miniatures. Now the first one was the pack leader for the Vermin. Um, this is a resin figure. I didn't actually film putting this together but it was very simple. It's just arms, legs, torso and head. And it's a lovely detailed resin model, so uh, you'll have no problems putting this one together at all. Just be very careful with those claws, because when I was cleaning a bit of flash off those, a bit of excess resin, um, one of them did break and I had to super glue it on. So they are quite fragile. This resin is a little bit brittle, so be very careful when working it and cleaning it up. And uh, make sure you don't break off any of that lovely detail. Here's the leader, the resin leader for the GCPS strike team, and that is Therese Washington. Again, a very simple resin model to put, to, to put together. Um, make sure the head is placed so it's looking down the barrel of the gun. Um, I subsequently dipped this in a bit of hot water and moved that head around just a bit more. So let's get on to the plastic. I've got two MDF bases for my Nightmare Vermins. So I'm going to build those two. Uh, because they're pretty simple to start with. They're larger models. So we've got two legs here and they just fit together very easily as you can see. Use a bit of your plastic glue. I've got this Revel glue here which I find very useful because the applicator is so small. And pop those legs together. Of course, you know very well by now just to clean off any excess bits of plastic on the plastic models. Once you've clipped them off the sprue, I won't go through all that again. You've seen it many, many times from me, um, just going through and cleaning up with the scalpel. Then you put on those two feet, and you can see this one's in a very crouching position. Now, initially I wanted to attach this particular weapon to the arm of the Nightmare. I changed my mind later on and removed the whole arm and put another drill in, but we'll get to that later. Here's the torso piece. I'm attaching that an arm, arm to the side. You can see there's no ball and socket joint or anything. It's just a flat joint, so you can move it around a little bit. You've got quite a bit of latitude there for how you place it. Then you get the head and pop it in position. There's your torso. A bit of glue on the legs, which I've super glued to that MDF base. And pop your torso and head and arms on. Again, there's a bit of flexibility here. That's the final result. Quite an imposing model. Got a bit of board presence, that one. There's two of those. Here's the other one. This is a night, uh, nightmare with a heavy chem thrower. Quite an impressive looking model. And a mean looking weapon. You can see there's lots of extra bits too after you've built the models. So I decided I'd change that arm on the initial one and turn it into twin drills. This is after I decided to use that list I found online. And also it looks a bit scarier, doesn't it? Stuck that on, a heavy drill on each arm, pretty scary. On to the Malignus models now, there's two of those. And I've just cut out some of the pieces here, they are. You can see this shoulder pad here. Uh, allows me to identify them and match them up with the arm pieces who also have the same shoulder pad design. Here's a head that I've chosen for the malignus with that gas mask on and a crouching feet. Of course do you clean up as always uh, especially on weapons because with weapons you can usually see a mold line going down the middle 
So you just want to scrape that off with the scalpel. I'm super gluing um, the feet to the base. Now you could use plastic glue for this. I just use super glue because I put that green stuff there, which again I, I change later on. So plastic glue would be normal. Put on any torso piece. You can mix and match whatever torsos you like, as you can with the feet. Don't forget the tail, of course. There's a whole uh, selection of tails, so you can pop them in and arrange them in any way you like. Quite a lot of flexibility here. That's my final result for this one. Then I want to put in the arms. So I'm going to have one arm with the weapon. This is a heavy ray gun. And then there's one that goes on the other side, and that has a point where it attaches to the gun. And there's not really a clear attachment point here, so you can just attach it to wherever it goes comfortably. You can't actually see where it goes. There's no spot where it attaches, but it still looks fine when it's finished, as you can see. Pop in a head, whatever head you've chosen. And there's my first Malignus with a heavy ray gun. There's the second one. He's got a chem thrower. And the chem thrower has got a backpack, so don't forget to put that backpack on and make sure the hose from the backpack joins up with the hose from the chem thrower. And there's your final model. Great looking model, this one. A lot of character in that. Here they are, the two a malignus, a heavy ray gun and a chem thrower. Now there are lots of bits to build all the crawlers and stalkers, but they're all kind of interchangeable. Here's the ray pistol. So I can have a ray pistol in one hand and a dagger in the other. This is a ray gun and a hand holding it or bracing it. Here's a ray gun with a pointing hand instead. So again, I've just put the torsos onto the legs. You can use any combination of them. And made up eight of those because I've got four crawlers with ray guns and four stalkers with ray pistols. So it's good to lay out all your combinations of arms in front of you on your work surface before you start gluing them together. So this is a stalker who's just got the pistol in one hand. And then I pop a head on as well. And while the glue is still wet, you can move things around a little bit and get the right pose. You might just want to tweak the way the head is looking, maybe put it on a little bit of an angle, just to give the pose a little bit more character, make it all work together. Here's another one with a pointing hand. I thought I'd make this a bit more interesting. So he's got a kind of vicious uh, leader shouting orders kind of face. Again, it's just putting them together so they, they work in a character way. This one's got the ray gun. So, of course, his hand will be bracing the ray gun. And there is actually a contact point for that. So make sure that goes together into the wrist of the ray gun arm. There's also lots of accessory pieces, knives and backpacks and things, or pouches you can attach, and of course a combination of tails. So here we go, this is uh, one of the stalkers. Let's look at the stalkers first. They've got ray pistols, as you can see, and we've got four of those. And then we go on to the crawlers who have ray guns. Lovely combination of heads with gas masks and things. This is my one shouting orders. That one as well. And here's my Vermin Strike Team. Really impressive looking team that. I'm really happy with the way it came out. Now it's time for the GCPS uh, Strike Team. You can see there's a whole lot of tiny bits here you have to put together. The trick is, is remembering that the Rangers have a helmet and jump pack and the Veterans have their face showing. So here's the Rangers and here's the laser carbines I'll be using for them. There's also a bunch of differently posed legs. So I just attached all the legs to the bases to start with. And then I can choose among these different poses. Then you pop on the torsos. You can mix and match between those. They really only go in one position roughly. And then choose a head. So make sure you've got those closed helmets for the rangers because they're flying around in jump packs. 
You might want to let it dry between the steps just to be careful, but I'm going quite quickly here. And then these guys have laser carbines, as you can see. He's in a running pose. Slightly stiff running pose. I'm not as crazy about these figures as I am the Vermin. They're fine. And then you put on a backpack, uh, or a jump pack, I should say. And there's no real great contact point for this. It kind of just hangs off the back of his neck. It looks a little bit ungainly to me. Um, but it's fine. As I said, uh, these are pretty standard figures. So we've got um, what I'm using as a lieutenant here. He's got a pistol. And here are the other rangers. This guy's got a flamethrower. Again, a bit of a clunky flamethrower. Wasn't too crazy about that. Um, this guy is a veteran marine with a laser carbine, so I gave him a bare head. And these guys have grenade launchers and another flamethrower. That's two veteran marines and a marine. So here's the GCPS all together. My strike team ready for action. Now, I've got great videos on how to put together your terrain. Um, I'll direct you to those in the show notes, but they're very easy to do. You just get these little clips and you pop them into the holes and you can use whatever combination of walls or ruined walls you want. And they go together in these kind of cube shapes. This is the ingenious thing about this system. It's all based on cubes. Very easy to put together and very easy to paint if you check out my other videos. There we go, there's one cube. So here they are. These are how I made up my two strike teams, the Vermin and the GCPS, from the core set of Dead Zone 3rd Edition. Um, I'm particularly happy with the Vermin. They look like great figures. The GCPS are kind of a bit more standard, not quite as exciting but uh, are still fine as standard marines. So I'm going to get on to painting these next. Um, I'll do a video on that and then we'll do a battle report as well and we'll find out all we can about the new version of Dead Zone. But I've played it before. It's a fantastic game. And as you can see, you get a lot in the starter set. I'll see you next time. Esoteric Order of Gamers, orderofgamers.com.